you know, via email because we'll have a lot of um, sheriff deputies and EMTs and fire trucks and just there's going to be a lot of activity and that shooting. afternoon. Yes, and they do use um, they use rubber rubber rounds. Yeah, so like there there is noise and um, it's really quite uh, <laughs> quite a scene for those who have been in town when they did that drill last year. Um, so we just kind of want to let the public know that that is going to happen, um, to not be alarmed. Um, and then, you know, just a big thanks to to all the um, entities who who plan for things like this and, and do do the drills. It, it is a lot of work and, and an unfortunate reality in today's day and age. So um, that is coming up. We will send out an email um, through through the town. Um, and then, yeah, just a big thanks if you if you see those folks putting that on. And I, I had two things that I needed to do, and I don't know that I've mentioned it to Aaron. I wanted to make sure that the fire department has the lockbox. We now have a lockbox for the key to, to this building. It's outside the door to the whatever side of the, what is that, east? Yeah, east. On the east side, we have a lockbox. <clears throat> and so the fire department now has the code for that to be able to get in. And that's important because if Aaron isn't available or someone isn't here, we've got to be able to let uh, people, the parents and whoever, into here. And then the second one was um, Deputy Workman had spoken to the UDOT shed about using the yard if they had to set up an incident command post because it would be a direct line of sight. And he was told that wasn't possible. So I've directed um, some communications to the UDOT regional manager and to deputy workmen to talk for them to talk. And Dan Hinckley's checking that out. Um, you know, it's not like we'd be doing it on a daily basis, needing to use that. But <clears throat> I think it's something that can probably be worked out with UDOT, but probably comes higher up than the shed. Any questions? And then. I know we'll all remember to ask Linda to send that out since my phone blew up last time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <clears throat> then moving to number six, which, which is the update on Utah Dene Bakea and the Town of Bluff Design Review Committee meetings and the current status of the Environmental Justice Government to Government Grant. Uh, <clears throat> today, we had our DRC meeting with um, Janet she, Melanie Daniels from UDB, and then Jen, Aaron, and myself were there. We, I initially sent out a uh, meeting invitation for Tuesday, not Tuesday, I'm so, my days are running together, sorry, okay. um, for this Thursday to meet here as a combined meeting with Utah Dene Bakea. But, uh, Dr. Chi asked for some additional time to be able to prep her board and get some things organized, which um, Aaron and I had anticipated that might be the request. So we will have a joint board meeting, and I'm really sorry to do this to everybody, but it will unfortunately be Tuesday morning, 9 to 1, for those of us that can make it. And I'm encouraging everyone on the, the council to be here in person as much as of that time as possible. And the purpose is to really, um, as Aaron indicated on the sub award grantee um, agreement that we have to have, to really pound out any differences, any questions, anything that we have so that we can go back to the EPA and say, this is a go. Um, it was a really positive meeting today. Um, I think we're all getting a little giddy and enthused that this might actually move. And so um, that's, I'll send out a, an agenda. I'll confer with Dr. Chi about making sure that the agenda meets with her approval before I send it out. But I will also make sure we have lunch and snacks because that will keep us all engaged. Two clarifying questions. So first, we will meet at the CCC building. So if there's anything physical that we need to view at the building, that's important that we're all there. Um, we did ask if a hybrid session would be helpful, but it certainly wouldn't be for the air board. But if for some reason we needed to have someone dial in here, let me know very early on since there's not a whole lot of internet, but in person is going to be great. My second question for you is, I guess it kind of works out. We have a meeting that night. 
are you thinking of the work session or a special meeting in order to vote during that meeting? Um, I would call this a work session and have us vote in our regular meeting at four o'clock. Cool. Um, in part because how the council votes will really depend on if we're all on the same page with UDB at that work session. And I also don't want them to feel like we uh, like we're forcing a vote. So we'll, we'll vote yes or no <clears throat> and moving forward on Tuesday's meeting. And again, I apologize it has to be on Tuesday, but in order for us to hit some of these critical deadlines with the EPA, it couldn't be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It would need to be Monday or Tuesday. So any questions or thoughts on that? Additions, Erin? Jeff? Yes. yes, so we definitely want materials available to board and council, um, so everyone has kind of an aligned view of what we're looking at. Um, I did meet with Melanie Daniels because they have some materials, including like that NDN grant that, you know, if we're, if we're saying that you know, grants are part of the packet, we want everything. Um, we will meet again Thursday to pull all that together, um, and then I will shuffle it by Anne to just see the level of detail because certainly there are a lot of documents that are pretty pretty detailed um, but if we're if we are putting together packets it might as well be <laughs> a holistic view of how we've gotten to this point so we can all be on the same page so yes that went well. and what we talked about in the DRC was actually having um, Melanie and Aaron put together the packet and then sending it to the printer and getting it printed in, in one nice spiral thing so that everybody has their pages aligned and we're not doing what I'm doing, which is shuffling and trying to find the right page, but we have it in a little spiral thing. And it will, you know, it, it's not expensive to really do. And it's certainly in terms of time for Aaron, Melanie, or me to be sitting here copying 20 seconds sets of this stuff is just not efficient. So, and then I guess I should ask though, um, you all, so we're going to have, um, we'll have grants, the partnership agreement, the existing redevelopment partnership agreement, and any kind of acquisition paperwork, budgets, and um, like a timeline of, you know, how we've gotten to the point we're at today. Again, this one section. Um, but in terms of questions that you all might have, would there be other documents that you'd absolutely want included in? Oh, in maps. It's, well, not just maps, but kind of the overall, it's our goal. You know, are we going for an education center? Are we going for office buildings? Are we, I, I would just like to get it. I think this is a good time to have that discussion about what's the mission statement for the building that we've never been able to get to. Right. Um, because we don't have a joint mission statement and the Cooperative Cultural Center name was something we just slapped on it as a makeshift two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know there have been some, some questions on both sides, like do we want to keep that name or do we want to change it and how do we do it? So I think that should be a really... Um, I'll add that to the agenda discussion about the mission statement. And it may be that we have a general mission statement for the community and then each entity has its own. We're a government agency, we're running from here, and you're a cultural education piece. But overall, it would be nice to have a broad mission statement as to why we have this partnership, which would be good for all of us to be thinking about in a different name down the road don't want to change it in the middle of the grant <laughs> i mean the middle of right, the right. submission of the grant yeah we'll really have them confused that we've now got another new entity in here but certainly something for the future i know udb um, has expressed that concern too they'd like a, a different name but. okay and thanks erin i know you and melanie have a fair fairly hefty project. <coughs> Excuse me, moving to the new business. Number seven is the inquiry from Moab to Monument Valley Commission regarding banners for 75 years of film. And 
I think the next few are yours, um, Aaron, so go ahead. So we've received a request um, along with San Juan County and the cities of Monticello and Blanding. Um, the Moab to Monument Valley Film Commission is celebrating their 75th anniversary. They do represent both Grand County and San Juan County, so that's why they're reaching out to you know, you know, our, us as a municipality. Um, they are, you know those street banners that you know hang up in Blanding, Monticello? They are offering to cover up to 25 banners per city um, in cost. They could give us up to 25 banners, um, but each city needs to determine whether, A, we have a spot to even display them, and B, if we would want to take on the install and, and things like that and permitting. And so I've included a banner mock-up, which has a couple little pictures from around our area. and. In my initial communication um, with the film commission director, I did indicate that Bluff doesn't really have a spot, but that I would bring it to you all. And if we needed to change that uh, or needed to consider that, we would. Um, but I just wanted to get a firm answer either way. So I can get back to them and give them a yay or nay on their ordering. So, Do you have any idea how long those banners would be up? It's a great question. So I know that they are doing things this fall. Um, they're going to do a big to do, and I think they're also reaching out. Don't hold me to this. Um, I think they're also reaching out to the um, Bluff Arts Festival regarding maybe some coordination with that. But I believe it's this fall, and I think they would order them here pretty pretty soon. And then I didn't see anything that would hold us to having them up for any specific amount of time, but just whether we would want to, whether those cities would want to include them in their rotations throughout the year. So. Yeah, I just think about them where we put them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, like, if they're talking to, I don't know, I don't know see what. I think it would be nice to have a couple that they could use for some advertisement with the with the arts festival if they want to, or um, you know, I mean, if we want to display some things <coughs> on I'd... one of the walls here or, or something, something like that. I, I don't know. I mean, it's probably if 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 they're not targeting this, I think it's not a bad idea to at least get a couple. I would say. We should get a couple of them, maybe three or four. And then as we move through our sign ordinance discussion <laughs> at the work <laughs> session, uh, we can see how that fits in. We already know that in the sign ordinance, we've, we're going to have to have an exception for the federal and state grant signage, that those temporary signs are going to be probably more like permanent signs for two to three years, and they're going to be bigger more likely than not than what we're, we're going to be talking about and possibly passing. So this would be a good time to talk about how does something like this fit into the discussion on banners and wavy flags and mm -hmm. th those types of things. But if you need to get back with them, I I would say, you know, four and, four and I could see where maybe um, Dan will probably cringe, but maybe someone like the, uh, the foundation, the community foundation would like one, and they do have that space that's pretty much in the middle of town. But I think this is a bigger discussion, but to keep moving rather than saying no. I think 25 is a little aggressive, and I did just find, my apologies, I should be a little, um, they are hoping, it's not a requirement, hoping to have them up through the year. So, um, but perhaps in my response to them, four, and we, are not committed on where they're going, um, but we'll, you know, there could be areas throughout town, but it's not going to look like Blanding's um, line street poles, if, right. if that's a fair response. Sure, yeah. so. street poles. <laughs> so the, um, the picture that you sent was vertical. Yes. The one place that I could see to put one is along the school fence, but it, it would have to be horizontal. Mm -hmm. And then that's the discussion with UDB as well. Like, do you, how do you feel about it? But I think to keep moving, does everybody feel okay about four? And and then, okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. 
You want to take yep. eight? Eight is update on Bears Ears Marathon hosted by Glanding. So Bears Ears Marathon, um, their economic development office is looking to host um, that marathon again. The targeted date is November 2nd. Uh, that's a Saturday. And we had asked, well, before, during, and after the last marathon, but again, that we really want Bluff to be very involved because the finish line ends right at the CCC building. Um, in my early discussions with Ben, I did indicate that we have no idea what those grounds are going to look like in November. I mean, my hope is that it's a complete construction zone, um, but that might be a little optimistic. Um, so I wanted to just let everyone know that's still on their radar. We have a couple major items that we really need Blanding to solidify before it moves. And, and I, I asked very politely, I said, you know, I, since you already had this race qualified, I assume you cannot change where it goes. And he said, no, it is, like, this is the, <laughs> the location, this is the finish line. So I said, in that case, we really need you to tighten up um, the EMT situation. And he did admit that last time they had not even reached out to the county about EMS. Um, so that'll be big. I've indicated the town is very concerned about traffic in Cow, in Cow Canyon, that they really need to work with UDOT to either get it closed or partially closed. But from a safety standpoint, that is probably our number one priority. Um, early indication is that that is a difficult request, but I'm going to kind of keep pressuring that, that that's pretty important to us. Um, it is additional cost for them to, you know, get the signage, the signs, those, um, you know, uh, light, light up, you know, they have to be out there three weeks in advance or something like that. It can't just be the day of, um, but I did indicate that, you know, that is our primary concern that they really take care of that traffic. Um, we talked about aid stations, we talked about, you know, volunteers, and then the big change, potential change, and not just, you know, if anyone's listening here, nothing has been, you know, this is early planning, um, but instead of doing vendors in front of the CCC building, since clearly we don't know what that's going to look like, um, potentially moving it down um, one block further, and so coordinating with the fort a little bit closer to see if we could utilize some of their space. So um, if there are any questions that I can take back to them, I'm happy to do so. I'm glad that we're on their radar. Um, you know, I think in some ways we're kind of, well, I mean, I guess the town could always just say no, but we're, they're kind of locked <laughs> to their race course, um, but there's still a lot of time for the planning process. And, uh, you know, we just wanted to get out really early. You know, these were our concerns from last year. They did have fairly solid participation. They also, Ben also indicated that they had about, I think it was 35 to 40 runners who took the shuttles from Bluff to the half or to the start. So they will definitely do shuttles again this year. And they recognize, you know, it's important that we spread out that tourism. I mean, that's the whole purpose is an off season race mm -hmm. to spread out the tourism. But he did indicate that the shuttles um, that you asked for and were actually pretty heavily utilized, so. Yeah, what they didn't push out with that was the use of hotels, motels, space like that. And and that was the one of the, the multifaceted questions I asked. If you're going to end it here, having run marathons, I don't want to end a marathon and then have to look for a ride to go back to Blandy in, in cold, sweaty clothes. And the medical tent was the other concern. Like when I got there, there was, there was nothing and continued to be nothing. And I think if we're going to participate, I was glad to see that Ben was reached out early. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in fairness to Ben, he had this handed to him at the last minute. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't Ben that dropped the ball. <clears throat> but, it but it was messy. It was not super well organized. Yes. And I think we really felt that, you know, there was a pretty severe lack of volunteers because of the lack of planning certainly at the finish line and i mean i know there were runners coming in and you know there were eight stations not even set up yet so hopefully it's a it was an eye-opening experience and you know if they want to do it again you know they, they know <laughs> some yeah. of the gaps they need to fill yeah they're gonna have a real eye-opening experience if someone gets hit in cow canyon or collapses at the finish line and they don't have emts there mm -hmm. i mean that's going to be a real wake up and i don't want it none of us want it to happen but we don't want it to be because we didn't prepare for it yeah. 
And I, I'm hopeful with this conversation starting earlier rather than um, two days before. And the thing about, I do want to, uh, thank the Ford. If anybody from the Ford is listening, you all did a great job of covering the finish line mm -hmm. when you saw that it was uh, rather messy and limited. And the second piece of it was, I'm going to forget. Let me think about it for a second. Well, when I think of it, I'll come back to it. But I really do want us to be talking. Oh, you dot. That's what I was going to say. I can certainly put Ben in, in contact with Dan Hinckley, who is Jared Beard's replacement, because you don't ask you doubt the week before to close the road no. or monitor the traffic. And and yes, it is difficult, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you doubt knows how to do, and they do it fine. But you, it, they just need to get on this, like probably right now, make mm -hmm. the request, and and if he hasn't talked with Dan, you know, get him in touch with him. And thanks for making that meeting, Aaron. I, do we know this? Uh, do, we, do we have a calendar date for the Monday marathon? Yeah. Let's go Google it. Um, that's usually how I find out about them coming. Um, <laughs> it should be the week after, it's but usually, I, it's usually like the Tuesday. It's after. Is usually in the middle of the yeah. Day, yeah. So that's why I don't think but, it's necessary. Yeah, that but that's a good question because they are pretty consistently here. Yeah. And yeah, they have been for the last five. Let's see here. Um, Tuesday, November twelfth. Okay. Oh, oh so good. We have a little. We have a little day. Yeah, that's good. Last, last At year least it was that like is, three days, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, that yeah, from very limited googling, which again, that's how I find out that they're here. Mm -hmm. um, show up a bunch of people running around town. Um, <laughs> it appears to be November twelfth. Okay. <laughs> they probably already booked with Malia say, probably too. They, they probably are. <laughs> well, good. That that's a good question, though. At least we won't have the trifecta that we had last year with the eclipse, the marathon, and the manly marathon. So do you want to take number nine on the request from the Women's Business Center of yeah. Utah to waive fees? All righty. So I don't know. I don't remember where we got in our discussion about, and, and I just might be completely, I, I, every so often, just a different list of priorities here. Um, I don't know where we got in our discussion, or if it was the previous council probably that was discussing waiving fees for nonprofit entities or... We've got some frequent flyers who, you know, would, would ask to, to waive fees for rental of the Bluff Community Center and or Fire Mesa Kitchen or, you know, things that we rent out. And so I got a request um, through Allie, I don't remember Allie's last name, I apologize, um, but she works for Women's Business Center of Utah, which is a nonprofit organization that provides resources um, to women-owned businesses and entrepreneurs. She did say, you know, anyone can attend these, but they do have a focus on women's, women-owned businesses. Um, so she's hoping to host um, an informational session on Wednesday, June 12th, needs the community center for about two hours, would need about three hours in total. Um, and, you know, as we were talking about logistics and everything, it came up if, if there's any way that, that a rental fee could be waived for a nonprofit. And so, wanted to put this one specifically on the agenda and or potentially not to add another thing to a work session, but talk about that process and like, well, how does it look like if um, someone is asking you all to waive fees and who approves that? So where I <laughs> think we were last year was that if they were a nonprofit, Malia could go ahead and waive the fee. And Linda raised a good uh, question is, our, do we intend to waive the cleaning fee? And I think that that's a fair question. It's one thing to waive the rental fee for a nonprofit, but the cleaning fee, we have a direct impact with staff. And so we could put it on um, the work session. I don't think it'll take that, it would take much time to squeeze it on with, that, with the Fire Mesa Kitchen rental contract that will be on the uh, work agenda next week. And then everybody can think about it. My inclination would be to stick with um, saying if you're a nonprofit, we'll waive the 
rental fee, but not the, the cleaning fee. But I can throw together a resolution for us to talk about next week when we talk about Fire Mesa Kitchen because that gets us into the kitchen rental piece. Is everybody okay with that? If I just throw a couple alternatives out. That, that is what the business owners of Block have done. When you have the Bloom Festivals, we evolve life the or life the mental feeling of the community. And honestly, rather than being expected to clean it up yourself, it's it's very nice to say. Yeah, I and when I was talking with someone who does cleaning, the person made a statement that everybody's idea of clean is different. And if we have a, if we have a particular, and I said, like for me, Bill, if you're listening, I don't do floors. So too bad, too sad. Um, yeah, so I think that that's a good one to talk about while we're talking about Fire Mesa Kitchen. And I was glad Linda raised that about the cleaning fees because we'd never really broken it out. We just said nonprofit and let it go with that. Part of it, too, was so that every time someone asks that they can use the facilities, we don't have to debate, should we charge them, should we not? Because then it <clears throat> becomes really difficult. So um, that was the other reason for doing it. And then just a little plug, because I, I have been talking to this organization, they do have a lot of really cool resources and trainings and classes. And so it was really important to them to like come down to the community and be able to share. They're also going to spend time in Blanding and Monticello. And so I made them come to Bluff too, and we'll figure out a way to, to host you. So um, yeah, lots of actually really fantastic resources um, available. So excited that that is coming to our community. Sounds good. We should be able to get back with them then after the work session. I appreciate and get, it. I'll get it on the agenda. She's like a super night. planner. And so, yeah, I was like, ah, for June, we've got time to figure that out right on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not next week. <laughs> no, I think that's really, um, those kinds of resources are really important to the community, particularly if we're talking about our strategic plan of, you know, thoughtful growth and mm -hmm. development. Like, how do we get those resources out to the community? Yeah. Great, thank you. I did not go to the San Juan County Commission meeting this morning. I had looked at the agenda. There were interesting things, but nothing that affected the WAF directly as a town. Erin, did you listen to part of it? I did listen to most of the meeting, and I would agree with that statement that there was nothing bluff specific. Then moving to planning and zoning which is 11 i've moved that to actually that'll go not to the work session that will go to the next meeting which would be march 12th and then a report on february 27th 2024 opening of the community center emergency food pantry um, i wasn't here for that but my understanding from Ginny Burns is that there were 400 and some people for the month of Mar or the month of February that used the food pantry mm -hmm. and that there were like 12 or 13 families that came in and actually used the emergency food pantry on Tuesday. There were 12 families, which represented 27 people, and it was busy the whole time, and it was a really positive experience. So the little plug to go with the food pantry is that not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, reminder for everyone, is the benefit uh, pavilion sale for getting rid of all your stuff that will benefit the food pantry and help them uh, get be more fully stocked for the emergency food pantry. So <clears throat> I know I'm going to do some serious digging and getting stuff out. Um, I also just want to report on that issue of the emergency food pantry that I'll bring it back for everyone to vote on and approve, but I have done a lease for one year for the space here with the storage space at the CCC because with the uh, food pantry moving in here as well, 
we need at least to cover both areas. So I'll bring that next week. So this has moved quite quickly given that we um, didn't need the executive session. Does anybody have any other? I have a, I have a question about a clarification. So Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we have a nine to one meeting, but then do we also have a two to four meeting? That's the work session and our regular meetings at four. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So what my hope would be because the work session was getting kind of lengthy and I didn't know how much we'd need to talk at the work session after we have the UDB joint meeting was to, instead of being from three to four for a work session, I'm going to push it back to two to four with the idea that we're going to take a break like at 3.30 so everybody can regroup um, or sooner. And it, if things go smoothly Tuesday morning, we probably probably won't have nearly the workload that I'm anticipating if we have to really sort some things out. It makes a long Tuesday and I'm sorry, but we'll just all be super close. Yeah. Fine. And just tell me what kind of food we're going to have. I've got to plan that one. Yeah. Food and snacks. <sighs> Any other or points of clarification? It is 447. All right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we're adjourned. I'm turning off the recorder. Thank you all. And thanks, Jen, for doing the minutes last time. Yes, we appreciate that. Thanks. Bye, everybody.